Hello and welcome to Keep On Cyber Trucking, a podcast where cyber truck owners share their experiences, talk about all things EVs and technology. We're back after taking last week off. The reason why we did that is just because there wasn't a lot of news and I had some stuff going on, so just decided to take the week off. But uh, we missed Good everybody. Host. And the Dodgers were playing. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But Chase, how's it going? Where are you at? It's good. I'm uh, actually in Lubbock, Texas, right now. I'm not in my office because we're in the midst of a, a road trip, uh, which has been pretty good with the Rivian R1S um, from Austin all the way up to Denver. So it's it's kind of a really cool like test to see you know how this actually does on on longer road trips and kind of you know the. It seems like it's the always the the big question that everyone asks when you have an EV. They're like, well, "What if you take it on a road trip?" Yeah. It's like, "Okay, yep. you know, this is the first road trip we've done in like maybe a year, and it's like one case out of you know daily driving." So, yeah, uh, that's yeah. always the question, the right? Oh, well, you're gonna have to stop every twenty minutes and charge for an hour. Yeah, uh, which we speaking of, we we were on the road about just over six hours today, and we stopped only for one charge because we we left with a hundred percent. And we uh, stopped for about 35 minutes. It only went to like 40, 45 because my wife went in and got a pizza. <laughs> well, that's, that's well, that's what I always tell people. You stop, yeah. you stop to use the restroom, you stop to eat, you stop to just stretch your legs, you stop anyways. Why not plug in and let it charge for a little bit? It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing is I was really concerned about the adapter. So we don't, we didn't actually until. Uh, 11 a.m. today, we didn't actually have an adapter that would work with, you know, the Tesla superchargers. Uh, we had ordered some from uh, A to Z, and, you know, I was kind of waiting patiently and realizing that it was like almost a month before they had shipped it. And they're like, they contacted me, like, you know, assured me that, oh, it's, it's shipping this week. And that was on this Sunday. Monday, I got the confirmation that they it left Canada, and we literally just got it today at 11 a.m. So, like, uh, props on to them. So time. we got, yeah, basically, it's a, adapter and so we can yeah we can use the the tesla superchargers and it, it worked out great today so it made it super easy so we don't have to worry about going to a tesla supercharger that only has the adapters available we can go to any of them now so props. nice i'm glad i'm glad you got that just in time because yeah i i i wouldn't want to travel a great distance in an ev without having access to the supercharger network so uh, i'm glad you got that adapter just in the nick of time to utilize the superchargers. Right. It's a little bit more expensive than I'm a, a you know, adapt to f spending. I think it was like 47 cents per kilowatt. Uh, not great, but I mean, it, like the other option was to go with um, Electrify America, which I'm pretty sure is about close to the same. So there was like stops along the way this route if we would go non-Tesla, but I would rather just do Tesla just to make it simpler. Yeah, no, 100%. And yeah, they, they they sock it to you, especially when you're out there on these road trips. They're going to charge you for the to get some juice into your, your vehicle. That's for sure. But I wanted to transition over to... So we have a special guest this week. Uh, Will's not with us this week, but we're, we have uh, Brian, otherwise known as OG underscore cyber on IG. And he has a very interesting story because like myself and many other Cybertruck owners who have had issues with the motors and specifically the inverters going out and disabling the rear motors on at least my uh, Cybertruck, which I know I've shared with our audience in the past, and it's actually happened to me twice to the point where on the second time it locked me out of the vehicle and I had to get it jumped. And it was it was a whole fiasco. I was out camping. I didn't have service. You know, I've, I've shared that story already. Um, but let's go ahead and bring Brian on because he has a very unique story as well. Um, hey, Brian, how's it going? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome. Yeah, thank you for coming Thanks. on. So, so Brian, let me let me introduce Brian a little bit more to the community and to the podcast. So, Brian, I call him kind of like the godfather of, of Cybertrucks because he does a great job kind of gathering all of the Cybertruck owners, at least here in Southern California. And I know he reaches out to people in Northern California and different states and, and whatnot. So he really brings everybody together. And it's not even just Cybertrucks. He gets, you know... Model 3s and Model Ys and everybody. It gets everybody involved. And we've done what he calls the cyber odysseys. So one of the famous pictures that's kind of gone viral and gone around is that a lineup of all the cyber trucks out in the desert 
I was part of that. And that was really cool, really fun time. And you've done two other Cyber Odysseys, right? And unfortunately, I couldn't make the last one, which I think was this past weekend because my son had a basketball tournament. But the previous one I couldn't make because of my inverter went out on me. And so, uh, Brian, why don't you kind of tell the audience and kind of explain exactly what happened with you. I know you were hoping you were going to dodge the inverter bullet, so to speak. Yeah. But unfortunately, it got you. So Yeah, and it got me right as I was going to an Odyssey this past weekend. So good talk about timing. Uh, but I guess, you know, lining, uh, I'm here and uh, I'm alive and the truck is not damaged. And uh, the reason I'll say that is uh, let's go back uh, this year on Halloween. Uh, I went to move the truck and get it all set up for the trick-or-treaters, as a lot of cyber truck owners did, to set it all up. And uh, had a really interesting game for the kids. Kind of what I do at the uh, car shows when I take the truck out. I have these dice, big foam dice, and each dice has alien on it. And then the kids roll the dice. If they get an alien to pop up, they get to not go to the bucket of candy where there's a little alien standing there. They got to go to the front and let the front open and reveal full-size candy bars. So that was like a highlight for them. And then they had an opportunity to go to door number two where they could have got something else, but it was a risk, right? So I had a line of kids. It was nuts because the word got out. Once the word got out with the kids, (laughs) they all flooded my house. So I had this big old line, but it was fun. But when I moved the truck to uh, put it in its place in the driveway – there was an alert. A service alert came on the screen. It said service alert uh, UI underscore A006. Immediately, what do we do? We, you know, hmm. look it up, try to look it up online. And it's just, there's not, it's very vague. There wasn't much information for me to, to reference. Uh, going on the forums, figure out if has anybody had this. Put a post, people reply, hey, you know, I had a Model Y and the inverter was getting a high resistance and that was causing that. Or it's just, it could be random and taking it in for anything since you've owned the vehicle since February and they've got recalls and they want you in there. Different responses that I've heard. <laughs> and I said, well, hell, uh, you know, that's really tough for me, but I've got an event this weekend and I'm going to go to it. So come uh, Saturday morning, I had the truck fully loaded with all, all the gear. I was obviously the organizer. I had breakfast food for the meetup at the supercharger. I had lunch, a grill, everything, <laughs> a lot of stuff there with me. And uh, loaded up and just so happened uh, to uh, reach out to some of the folks who are closer to where I live. So, hey, do you want a caravan from this location to where we're going to meet near Palm Springs? And then that's where the rest of the group will come together and meet at the supercharger. And they're like, yeah, that's cool. I'm leaving my house in five minutes. I said, well, here's a lo- meetup spot. Let's meet here at the 7-Eleven. It's all good. So, of course, I get to the 7-Eleven. And, you know, what do I do? It's dark five o'clock in the morning and my truck having the underglow lighting and then and, and the wheel wells and all that i'm like i got it at a gas pump i'm you know taking some pictures of it you know and people are looking and they show up i'm like okay cool let's go <laughs> so we leave we start driving and we get about 15 miles into the we're on a road two lanes in one direction two lanes in the other it's got a, just a big middle uh center turn section area there and i'm coming up to a light and uh the light is uh Yellow. It's turning yellow. I'm probably a quarter mile away from it. So I'm just starting to let off on the accelerator and the regen starting to kick in as the regen gets stronger. Next thing you know, the truck hard and you hear this thud from the rear of the truck. Like it almost feels like you get rear ended. But as I was kind of coming to stop, it was weird. Mm -hmm. And my buddy was behind me. So uh, next thing you know, the screen is going crazy. The lights are, the whole thing is highlighting in red and it says, it says pull over immediately. The truck would not move. It was it was done at that point. It wouldn't do anything. So I'm going through the menu. I'm trying to do everything I can to get it to just get me off the road. Nothing's working. I'm going to off-road mode, trying to see if I can get the front motor just to let, get me out of there. Nothing. And then, so the hazard lights are flashing. They're behind. They eventually get worried because they're watching people fly up at high speeds and just jump around. There's a screen shot there. Looks like you've got my screenshot from one. So you can see the cyber truck in the... Uh, in the rear, rear camera view, so there's a buddy behind me with his cyber truck at the time, right when it was happening, when the lights were flying and all that. But shortly after that, they figured they didn't want to get rear-ended because, you know, people are up on us, so even with the hazard lights on. So they moved and parked into the uh, gas station on the corner. And so I'm sitting there, and within, I don't know, five, ten minutes, everything went dark. It just, the, the screen, everything was dark. I had to use the manual door release to get out of the truck. And I'm like, really? So I get and now it's just pitch black and there's cars in the distance coming out. Oh, I'm like, oh, hell, I got a flashlight. 
in my pocket they got. So I got a flashlight. I'm trying to like shine it to people like, hey, 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 hey. You know, and I'm watching people swerve. And then my buddy over to, at the uh, gas station, he's like, oh, man. He runs over with some traffic cones. We start setting those up further back. And then he went back and got his truck and he's got his lights going. The thing – here's the takeaway. Uh, one thing that I just think of why I agreed to want to come on the, the podcast was it's kind of like a PSA. It's super important if you have any, if you have a, I think this might be only the duels. You guys probably know better than I, uh, but I've only seen it with the dual motors having this uh, common problem. But problem. if it, okay, so if it happens and you're in my scenario and it's dark and, uh, and the flat, the hazard lights don't work, then you're, a lot of people at risk. Uh, if you're in your truck, you're at risk. If you're standing around your truck, you're at risk. The people driving down the street unknowingly are at risk. Um, because it's nature. What, what do people do in the cars nowadays? They're looking at their phones or whatever they're doing. They not, they might not be a hundred percent in the game. And if they're not in the game, somebody could die. As a matter of fact, I called the police as well as my friends and the other seven truck called the police separately. And that police department in that locality basically said, because it was five thirty AM, they said, Oh, we're in the middle of shift change. So we'll see if we can get somebody out there. They didn't, they didn't, Jeez. the tow truck showed up before the police. That's how often does that happen? A tow truck, great right? Tesla roadside service showed up before the police. But they showed up, thank God, yeah. and before that truck got obliterated and before someone got really hurt. And uh, so the PSA is if you have an experience, even if you have, I guess, in general, you probably should have some sort of strobe light, something to have a flare. Glow sticks. To put, yeah, out in the, to alert people, sit it up on the uh, tunnel cover at traffic. I went and got one of these little, uh, these little guys, this thing is extremely bright. Um, totally. So, so I could nice. put that on the, um, so there's a lot of different things on Amazon you can buy uh, or wherever, uh, but certainly something to keep you safe in the event that it happens in the dark. Um, and there, so let's go into the uh, towing uh, scenario. So the tugger. He immediately said, this is like, he goes, this is my sixth one this week. I was like, what? Six one wow. this week? Wow. Cybertruck. And Damn. then he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes, I don't know what's going on with these trucks, but uh, I need to, he goes, what I would do is I jump the, the front and then I get, we get it powered back up. He goes, but we're in traffic. I, I'm just yep. picking this thing off the road and we're leaving. We're going to the dealer with it. That's what we're doing. So he basically took, because the truck is, not going to just freely move as we all know. It'll still kind of turn, but the the rear wheel locked up. So he had these mm-hmm. like plastic sled ski things that he pounded in with a hammer underneath each, um, each rear wheel. He backed the, 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 uh, the tow truck up with the ramp down. So he had it just kind of up underneath the tires a little bit. And he pounded those little, little chocks, these little plastic chocks. And then he drug it up onto the, uh, the, the, the bed of the, uh, the, the, the tow truck. So, the and then we went to Tesla, yeah. and we got to Tesla at seven in the morning. The gates were open, and somebody was waiting for me. I was surprised. So That's at crazy. least there's that. Shout out and that I got a car ready guy. for he me and everything. Like a professional. He was great. I know. Yeah, that. yeah. I hope that he's a I mean, good that's dude, a wild so. anecdotal experience, even from the tow truck driver. That I feel like we haven't really heard much of. Like that, it's concerning because like, you know, that's it's. This is around the time, and I don't know if you said, but what what VIN did you have? Uh, okay, me. it's crazy. So like, yeah, we we were at 1553, and then you know, dropped it at 12,000 miles. It literally was like a ticking time bomb from what I've seen. Ticking time bomb is an yeah. interesting comment because that, sorry, but the, that, that no, you're okay. leads me to these events that we uh, coordinate out here in the Southern California area where we go to very, very remote locations. And mm-hmm. the group, I, I, my sample size is about 60 cyber trucks that I communicate actively with. And in within that 60 cyber trucks, Going to events, every time I set up an event, when people confirm, there's always somebody or more than one person dropping out of that event because of this exact issue. And Eric's is an example uh, on our camping event, actually, at the Trona Pinnacles. So that yep. was a bummer. Yep. But um, I, That was a huge that, bummer. That event, three dropped on that event. One from – one was you, and the other was uh, from Palm Springs, and the other was a guy in Colorado who was going to come out uh, to, to go to this event. So um, – so w- the topic of discussion is at these events, you know, that people are concerned about it. And we are worried that if it were to happen out in a remote location, <laughs> the yep. tow trucks won't pick you up in the desert. They yep. say if you're in the dirt, yep. uh, they will not come get you. We had a beast go down on the first Odyssey out in um, 
in the desert and I had to pull yep. him out with a strap. I pulled him back out to the pavement and then the tow truck would pick him up there. So the concern is if your truck were to leave you stranded in the desert, you have to have another way out. And so when my truck went completely dark, who knows how that would have played out out there in the desert. So in a way, silver lining was I didn't make it to the Odyssey. I had somebody else who was going to take it over and handle it and, and, and take everybody on the agenda of the place by place. But, you know, I didn't go out there. And if it would have happened while I was out there, who knows how that would have turned out. It would have been a big pain in the butt and everybody had a worse time to con- concern. Because one thing we do have is we've had some situations happen at the Odysseys. The one I mentioned with the tow, the second event at Trona, uh, Eric, we had uh, one of the cyber trucks. Someone had their phone in their back pocket. They were sitting in the front watching one of the trucks do donuts. And when they went to get out of the front, their phone fell out of their back pocket and the front closed and the phone was inside the front and they couldn't get into the truck anymore at all. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. I was like, your phone is so close to proximity. Why can't you get in your truck? And so we would all think that your phone would be good. Yeah. In the fr- what, what is that? So if all of us are like around this truck, well, what that the hell is going a weird on with this glitch. truck? It was super weird. And then so what do we do? There's no cell phone coverage out there. So it was like, yeah. what, are you, what are you going to do? So one of the guys had Starlink. We got on Starlink. We opened up and we shared her key. Like one of the guys does Turo rentals. He goes, just, we'll share the key like it's an and share the key to him. And he got the. Oh, wow. That got... yeah, was a trip. Smart thinking. That's yeah, awesome. it was a trip. Yeah. And the Starlink. other thing is the. Yeah, um, Starlink. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to Starlink. The, uh, the, the little leads on the, on the front. Putting a battery yeah. on it didn't open. It didn't open the front. It for whatever reason it wouldn't open the front. And so that was the first. We tried to oh, pull those wires out, put a battery on it. It didn't open the front. And they were like, "What do we do now?" And that's when the whole share the key type scenario. So we've had things happen out at the Odysseys, and that's why the Odysseys are so important because you want to go do something fun with your truck and learn what it's like to drive your truck in those conditions. Maybe you are experienced in, in off road, and maybe you're not. And so you get a mix of folks going out there, and you're with a group of like minded people, all with the same vehicles, and all there to help you in the event that something goes wrong. And so that's another big thing about the. That's why the Odyssey really exists. It's not like oh, we're going to profit and get sponsors and do. That's not what it's about. It's really just about. Yeah, it's let's get some. Yeah, cool the yeah, the the Odyssey, the the you know, once again, I've only been to one, unfortunately, but <laughs> really fun. Um, I encourage anybody who's in the Western states, you know, if you're able to make it out, once again, uh, Brian's IG is OG underscore cyber underscore, I believe, and uh, hit them up on IG if you ever want to, you know, get more information on any of these, um, you know, cyber Odyssey uh, adventures. But yeah, and I think I think another PSA, uh, you had a good one with having some type of lighting in case you're in the middle of the night and, and experience something like this. But one thing I will say, the thing I've learned now is don't go anywhere. It's It sucks that we have to say this, right? Because it's like, we, we love our cyber trucks and we love EVs, but the reality is the reality. And I, I want to share the whole point of the podcast is to share our experiences and to share with people who are considering buying a cyber truck, you know, you know, we tease, we're beta testers, we're early adopters, right? And so learn from us. And one thing I will say, my PSA is, if you're going to go anywhere and you're going to go somewhere rural, make sure you have somebody else with you in another yeah. vehicle. Oh, because, you take a yeah, because like I went camping. So my inverter went out twice. First time it went out, I was driving, I was getting on the on-ramp on, on the freeway. And same thing, felt a little jolt, heard a little noise. Then it started yelling at me, right? The, the screen and the computer. I was able to drive. The front motor worked. I was able to drive and, and get to Tesla service. So, okay, no big deal. The second time it went out, it locked me out like, like how it did to you. But I wasn't driving. I was camping. So when I woke up in the morning, car wouldn't unlock. I was just thinking the whole battery system died. You know, the battery died and maybe the 48 volt died on me. That's what I was thinking. I had a guy come out. They jumped it. But I was lucky enough that I had my buddy with me. Shout out to Zach. He was with me in, in his truck. So I was able to get in his truck and take off and uh, meet up with the, you know, tow truck guy, I guess you could say. And he was I was able to take him to my campsite because I was once again in, the, in, the, in a remote area where I had no service. So if I didn't have my buddy there, it's it would have just made 
everything that much harder. So that would be my PSA is if you're going to go anywhere, especially right now, if you're an early adopter, you already own a cyber truck and you say, I want to go camping, take somebody with you. Absolutely. Because you don't know what the situation may be. Anything could happen. And it really sucks that it's like that. We were talking before the show started, Brian, about a will or as everybody knows them as F the pump on X and Instagram and all that. Uh, I was at the Rove event a few weeks back and we were talking and he mentioned, you know, uh, knowing that my inverter has gone out and I asked him if it's happened to him. He said, no. And I go, I hate to say it, but it's going to happen, you know? And he was like, ah, oh, don't put that on me. And I go, it, it, it is. And, you know, you had mentioned that it, it did go out on him uh, just about a week ago. Yeah. It just, it just seems like every cyber truck it's, it's hitting them. It's hitting everybody. And it seems to be around that 11, 12, early teens um, mileage. So it's unfortunate, but you know, the whole point of the podcast is to share our experiences and share with everybody who's listening. This is what's going on. And it's, it's, Tesla is notorious for not really being transparent and putting out a lot of information, unfortunately. And so that's where we're going to be honest and we're going to sit there and say, hey, this is what it is. And, uh, you know, I know I scared I'm, you a little bit because yeah. I had told you it went out twice on me and you're thinking in your well, head. I mean, the inverters, how much mileage did you get or how long was it between the two? I think it was like a week and a half later. It happened again. Well, wow. okay. So, well, then maybe they that. figured they, yeah, maybe they figured something out between them. <laughs> well, no, I, of course, I'm I've sorry to folks, scare you. No, no, I mean, you know, it's fine. I mean, I, it, it's getting some attention at some high levels uh, from some Tesla engineering uh, folks who are going to get that unit and send it off and look at it or whatever. So there's, there's people that I know that are trying to like really look into this heavily. And I'm like, well, it's kind of common. And so I don't know why they yeah, go with it, but enough. I, I, uh, yeah, I, hope, the I nature hope will, Well, I would, what I would want to happen is for Tesla to just kind of put this out and go, Hey, what I would love to see is if they were to say, Hey, you know what? If you have, have a cyber truck, bring it in and we'll just replace it. Yeah. You know, if they, if they already have an improved inverter, I don't know if they do because they replaced mine and then it went out again. So I don't know if they have an improved one. I don't think that they do at this point because it doesn't sound like it. And that might be the case. That might be the reason why they're not doing that because they're going to sit there and say, okay, we're going to spend all this money and time to replace inverters. And we don't even know if that's going to help. I would be curious to see how high the VIN numbers really go for this issue. I know we all really had low VINs, but then if we start to see VINs within like, you know, you know, 5,000, 8,000, you know, plus into the 10s and 20s, then there's a real serious issue. Yeah, I would, I would love to actually find that out. So as a matter of fact, uh, since obviously we're live right now, but this is going to go to all of the podcast platforms and also to YouTube, uh, anybody that's had an inverter issue, uh, please do me a favor, leave a comment, let me know uh, your mileage and your VIN number, or at least range of VIN number, if you don't want to give out the exact VIN. Um, that would help us kind of uh, figure this all out. And maybe on the next podcast, we could kind of share that information and just, you know, 100%. try to narrow this down a little bit if yeah. we can, so, you know, if anybody's out there and had that issue, hopefully nobody does, but you know, it, we know there are people. Have- Not to derail too much, but I, I will kind of shout out the, the cyber odyssey stuff. It looks like a ton of fun. And if you saw the story, I did have my hands on some of the same desert dust, at least, because if you saw earlier in the podcast, I acquired Eric's uh, like rear fairing, and yeah. I cleaned that thing notoriously a lot to get all the dust from that, that nice. trip off of it before I put it back on the the actual, uh, sorry, on our truck to uh, to then sell it. So whoever's going to yeah, buy so, our truck so is told that it has a story. Let's tell yeah. Brian that little story real quick before we let him go. We know he's busy. But... Um, so uh, Chase went out and he did some jump. He jumped his uh, cyber truck and, you know, the little fairing that's in the, the rear tires you to take off before you off road. Yeah, exactly. One. So yep. he broke, <laughs> you broke your passenger side. I believe it was the, he broke yeah, one. The... Let's just, yeah, let's, broke just call... yeah he, let's just call it the passenger side. He broke the passenger side. No, actually it was the driver's side. You broke your driver's side. And then I broke the passenger side when I was um, at Odyssey and I was drifting. And so I broke my passenger side. So and then one day Chase and I are talking and he goes, hey, I'm thinking about selling my cyber truck, this and that, whatever. I know you broke one, but which one did you break? And I told him the passenger. He goes, oh, my gosh. Well, 
what are you going to do with the driver one? I go, I don't know. I'm not going to do anything. Well, if you can, can you send it to me? I would love to put it on mine because I broke my driver one. And then now both are, you know, you know, neither one of them is broken and I can sell it and no big issue. Right. And so that's what I did. I sent it to him. I apologize yep. in advance because I sent it to him dirty. And so that's what he's talking about. <laughs> he had some of the, he had some of that dirt from Johnson Valley out there. Very and valuable I'm item. Excited Very to have it. Yeah. The inaugural, <laughs> inaugural Cyber Odyssey piece right there. So whoever it's gets that. item. Yeah. The, the, I kept the, the, the broken the, one, the by the way. There it is. You know, it's <laughs> nice. a quick series. You just yeah. You said, yeah. Nice. After that, uh, after that jump, I had the CEO of T Sport Line in my DMs, and I was talking to him. And I was like, "This, you need to make a, a product for these these fairs. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to have to take them off every time you want to go off roading, that's just a minor inconvenience. Yeah. And then yeah. we talked about it on the pod, but it's really, you could tell in the off road manual if you look at all the photos, one of theirs is clearly broken and hanging on for dear life. <laughs> so it was like an afterthought it. from Tesla. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah, good. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's awesome. cool. Well, Brian, we appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, giving some insight and advice for anybody. Hopefully okay. nobody deals with this. Nobody goes through this like we have. But yeah. um, if they Absolutely. do, some great information. Once again, Brian, is there anything you want to plug or anything you want to share? Anything coming up? Any odysseys? We are on a break because we're coming into the Thanksgiving season as well as Christmas. So we did our final one at the beginning of November for the year, and we will kick back off probably in January sometime. What I nice. normally do is I will post on uh, Instagram. I will put owners forum online. Uh, it'll normally say Cyber Odyssey upcoming event, and then I, I, I get people off of that. And then I'm on X as well. It's BLove77, um, but I'm not, I use it a little bit but uh, because – uh, it's kind of a platform a lot of folks use, so I use that. So again, that's B L O V E seventy seven. I know it. B love. So anyhow, <laughs> yeah, there's some history. I'm only gonna get into it. But anyway, yeah. So uh, check it out, and um, yeah, it'll uh, we'll be kicking back off next year, and uh, look to see people come out from all over, uh, like I'll be from Utah, uh, Vegas, uh, Arizona, come out to these events. So um, it's certainly worth the uh, the drive out, especially the camping. The overnight events are great because you're not just there for a few hours and you're driving like 10, 12 hours to get to the spot. So, uh, yeah. But to driven out for a long distance, I've always said it didn't matter. It was worth it. It was great. It was fun. Um, and then the three that we get, the last one, we were at a tank museum, the, the pictures with the, the, the cyber trucks around the tanks, literally were parked right up on these tanks, really awesome stuff. So we try to mix it in with some really neat things. See and do and uh, love the header. He's showing a couple of the, uh, pictures and there's there's the uh there's the truck that's in the shop sitting there waiting to get worked on it got dropped up on saturday they haven't touched it yet so uh we'll just see how long it takes them to fix it yep well also there's the anaheim um uh, tesla dealership uh opening like a grand opening event on november 15th and we're going to have 15 to 20 cyber trucks at that event eric i don't know if you're going to be attending that What's the date on that again? I saw that. It, I would like to attend. I, I, it's I know. A it's Friday. It's Friday, November fifteenth, from six. So you're gonna have like refreshments, music, stuff like that. Opening up this yeah, event. Yeah, I might be able to do that. They want to position the cyber trucks in the, in the cyber nice. trucks done by then. Which at this point, I'm like wondering, but uh, I'm hoping to have it ready uh, for that. So we'll see what happens. But oh, like yeah, that, no, that's no, going to be a fun no, event. No, no, no. Awesome. See awesome. You like you're becoming the, awesome. the West Coast Interbeck, bringing people <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah. Just yeah, trying to is. do it. You know, just have fun with these trucks. Yeah, you know. One hundred percent. I mean, I love it. Like it's bringing people together that never would be before. Like I, it, I, it, I could only relate it to like maybe Raptors at this point because like they'll have, you see all these Raptor runs everywhere where people get together and be like, oh, you've got a Raptor too. Right. All right, cool. You're in the mm -hmm. you're in the crew. But if you got a Cybertruck, you just have the same capability. But now you're you know in the future. Absolutely. One, absolutely. One hundred percent. Yep. Thank Thanks, you, man. Brian. And then uh, just real quick, I know the audience doesn't care about me saying all this, but. <laughs> Uh, if you look over on the side, you see how it says 39% uploaded. Do you see that next to your name? My okay. screen. But okay, okay, what's it mean? I'll send you. I'll send you a link to uh, okay. just to get everything uploaded. Cool. Yeah. Pr cool. Appreciate it, Brian. Thank All you. All right, folks. You guys have a good one. Take care. We'll see you. Yep. Yep. All right. So, yeah, that, I think that was uh, some really uh, good information from Brian. On um, you know, obviously, unfortunately, he went through that. Uh, you know, inverter issue that I've gone through as well, but his was a little scarier because he was actually driving and in the middle of the intersection shut, too. 
it just shut down on yeah. us. So that was um, unfortunate, but I'm I'm glad that, you know, like he said, he's safe. Uh, there's no, been no issues with him. Hopefully they're able to get his Cybertruck fixed sooner than later and get him back on the road because, like you mentioned, and we were saying, you know, he's he facilitates a lot of these meetups and things that we do. So uh, we really do appreciate him. It's just really concerning because I, I feel like if I were to come into, you know, Cybertruck ownership even today, you know, I would maybe say you might want to maybe go for a non-foundation series or even wait till middle of next year at this point. Yep. We've given these stories, you know, just because, you know, you never know. Even if you bought one today brand new, it, maybe it was like a foundation series sitting in a lot somewhere. You don't know if it's got the same issue or not because we really haven't heard anything from Tesla. That's yep. a concern. But yeah, I mean, we in chat, it's funny that you say that because in chat, there's been a few people that are saying, you know, that's the reason why, or number one, uh, some of them are saying there's a reason why they're waiting, you know, things like this. Some are going, uh, let me find it right now. Bill goes, now I'm genuinely scared to get one. I was going to do it tonight. So, you know, I don't want to scare anybody and I, and I don't want to discourage anybody because obviously I feel very strongly that the Cybertruck is a great truck. It's a great vehicle. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, I still say to this day, it's the best driving vehicle that I've ever driven. 100%, and, yeah. and I've driven a lot of different vehicles, you know, from high end luxury vehicles to high end sports vehicles to um, heavy, heavy duty trucks. And this, this is just, I've never driven anything like this. Yeah. yeah. It's just so much fun. But unfortunately, like we say, we're beta te testers pretty much, especially us early VIN numbers. And uh, there's going to be problems just like any other piece of technology. And, you know, Teslas are really, you know, these huge computers on wheels uh, more so than anything else. So right. it's, it's understandable. It's, I don't, I don't want it to be this way, but it's, mm -hmm. it's understandable, you know, it's just same way. What we have to go through. Like every day, you know, driving the R1S quad motor, it's as fast as a cyber beast is, yet I miss steer by wire every single day. <laughs> like it yeah. is just, it's incredible, like how much of a difference that makes steer by wire as well as the, you know, the quad steering. Like having that is, is game changing with, with any kind of vehicle. 100%. Um, speaking about other vehicles, though, what I wanted to, uh, to kind of share is some really exciting news that happened this week that um, I really just uh, I'm 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 like in love with this. Let me go ahead and pull this up. I'm sure everyone's seen this at this point. Um, I think it was announced uh, last week or so, but uh, Scout is back. Yeah. And they have a SUV coming out as well as a, a truck. And watch some YouTube videos on this. I've seen some uh, promotion. And I feel like Scout has put everything that I wish the Cybertruck had into their vehicles. And like, it's this... just, it's amazing. And because I... I was asking some questions, but I never really got like solid answers for it. Like this is actually coming out of the VW yes. uh, sponsorship from Rivian, because this is basically on, you know, Rivian's technology, but it's kind of a new take on it. Right. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, that's my take on it is that that's what it looks like to me. It, it looks like it's a, the Rivian platform done by Volkswagen who owns Scout. Right. Yeah. That makes more sense. And it just like even right there on that screen they showed it's just the fact that they put that little tray, you know, that slides out in the front so you can sit down. It's a little more comfortable seat. You know, I believe it, they're going to have an option to have up to 500 miles of range because there's going to be a gas generator on board to help recharge the batteries. That That'd is, be huge. yeah, I love. That, you know, I know some people go, well, I just want all EV, you know, electricity. I don't want any gas. But for someone like me who wants as much range as I can get, I mean, I would totally opt in for that, you know. And I, I, I'm sure that's going to be much cheaper than the $16,000 range extender that's going to take up a third of my truck or my the vault, the bed of the truck. So I love the interior of the Scout. It has, I believe, 10,000 pounds of towing capability. 
One thing I noticed though as well is uh, I was watching a, a YouTube video from my buddies over there at TFL, and they say that it's not quite a mid-sized truck. It's 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 a little bit bigger than that. So it seems like it's bigger than the R1T. I wonder how that's working out if it's based off the same platform. Yeah, it'd be nice if it was bigger. But I, honestly, what what has me excited is what you you got in the video here. It's like kind of basically the the answer to the Bronco, but in yeah, it's like a it's like if a Bronco and a Rivian had a baby, this is what you would get. But what has me concerned in questioning a lot of things is that because this is VW is obviously purchasing technology and engineering from Rivian, so they're kind of mixing those two. But this mm -hmm. is almost making a direct competitor to Rivian's vehicles themselves. So it feels weird that, yes. that this is this is in their mutual benefit. I mean, maybe, you know, because in a way they're doing better than what Rivian is on certain features, which. Yes, I agree. I agree with that. But I guess that's why they got paid, what, five billion dollars. Or... Yeah, they're like, here you go. We'll save you. you compete with us all you want you know yeah because uh, honestly like my i still really like i really like the bronco and i love love that they like brought it back because uh, initially like i was i've always wanted to get like a if i had a fun car go get like an og bronco and just kind of yeah trick it out but then the I'm new right broncos came you. out and then i'm like okay new, new broncos are cool but the bronco raptor now we're talking and then it looks kind of really cool but then which kind of leads me to, well, what if it was a Bronco Raptor, but it was an EV? And that's when you're starting to get, get those scout vehicles, which has me, has me actually really excited. Yeah. No, it's, um, you know, you talked about, you know, a Bronco. I wanted to talk about another vehicle, and you mentioned the Bronco, and I just, uh, as a tease, I wanted to kind of show this one as well. But uh, here's here's the, the new, what well, you know, the Weekender. Have you seen this one? From Kia. I seen this. Okay. Oh, from so Kia. That's right. From Kia. I did hear Kia about. Yeah. Kia <laughs> unveiled their concept, which is called the Weekender. It's the uh, off roading uh, what? super vehicle, you know, as they're kind of calling it, it's a camping <laughs> van concept. You know, I can't say it's a little weird looking because, I mean, I drive a Cybertruck, right? So, uh, but <laughs> yeah, right. But, but it's, it's very interesting. One of the things that I find uh, kind of interesting is the fact that it has solar panels on top, which is something that, you know, I don't understand why more EVs don't have solar panels. But it has solar panels on top, but also the the wheels, the way it um, generates energy based off of the wind. And, you know, the wheels are turning and, and there's wind happening there. That helps... Um, uh, generate some energy as well, so that's kind of cool. So I think yeah, I think the Cybertruck actually proved that you know you can. I mean, objectively, I'm not like a fan of the of the look, but mm -hmm. where yeah. I'm interested is the capability. Like you said, like having a solar panel on the roof that already has me interested. And I think the the Cybertruck kind of proved to us in a lot of ways that capability is king. And the fact that of like everyone thought that you know the Cybertruck looks weird, blah blah blah. But then we, when we finally got the production model in hands, people were like, wow, this is actually can do a lot of really cool things that we didn't expect. And that's what really speaks. So if if it looks odd, I can let that pass if it's you know going to function really well. 100%. And like we said, we bought Cybertruck, so we can't <laughs> right. complain too much. And, and here I am complaining about the Silverado EV because of the looks. So. Exactly. But I mean, at this point, I, I just had this conversation with someone this last week because they were like, oh. um, you know, I'm not sure about the Cybertruck. I would maybe want to go with like a Lightning. And I'm like, just don't go with the Lightning because that's the cheapest one out of, I mean, it's the cheapest made EV truck out of all of them that we have cap like have on the, the docket right now. Like, I think you could go with a Silverado EV and get everything you need as long as you don't need to go off-road mm -hmm. and you're going to get a way better product for, you know, less money. Yeah, I agree. I think if you're go if you're looking for a full size truck and you don't want to go with Cybertruck for whatever reason, um, I think the Silverado or the CRR are the way to go. Um, in my personal opinion, um, I think you're what you for what you're getting, and it's truly an EV truck. You know, the Chevy set out to make an EV truck as opposed to like we've talked about in the past, where the F one fifty Lightning is kind of a conversion. Right. Um, but another. Uh, vehicle that i wanted to share um once again we took last week off so there's some 
things I want to share with everybody. There's a lot of cool things, yeah. Yeah, is is this uh, the electric EM90 luxury minivan. So if you look, it's a little bit longer, and there's a reason for that. They're really making this, um, you know, like a higher-end vehicle from Volvo. Um, let me get to the interior, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You see the leg room here yeah. in the middle seats. That really is like the main focus for this vehicle. And you but see tyrants or who? Like, yeah, I'm curious about these back seats for sure. Yeah, I think I mean I think they're aiming towards like executives that want to sit in that middle seat and kind of be right. uh almost like a limousine type of situation. I'm not sure, you know, if yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if people are gonna actually be buying that for this reason, but it it looks really nice. I mean, it's futuristic. There's a lot of cool yeah. features, but um, yeah, I just thought this was something that came up uh, recently, and I was like, you know what, uh, I want to show this. Yeah. And one hundred fifteen thousand dollars for a minivan. You know why not? I mean, yeah, at this point, I mean, if if, if the hundred thousand dollar you know Cybertruck is a family vehicle, why not at this point? You get the third row, third row yeah. for an extra fifteen grand. But yeah, the. The thing is, though, like at that price point, you might as well. You're, I think you're right. It's more like the executive car that you actually have more space to carry more people, and that would be the the, the market, I would think. But you're also up against, you know, the Mercedes and and yeah. the other ones that are, you know, doing really well already. Yeah, not sure if this this car is actually going to make it to the market, but uh, at one hundred fifteen thousand dollars, it looks nice. But at one hundred fifteen thousand dollars, I'm not sure who's really buying that, but. Um... You know, I thought it was interesting, and as always, I always appreciate when people are pushing the envelope and coming totally. out with something new and and innovative, and you know, really trying to get um, something out there to yeah. Get I just people heard a talking. lot of interesting things this week about the. So I've always had high hopes for the eventual um, EV Raptor from the F one fifty Raptor, yep, um, which is now coined the Switchback. And they're calling it the switchback, I've noticed, because they want to be able to switch between, you know, off-road and on-road capability, just with, like, you know, obviously a suspension change, just kind of like the, the Cybertruck did. But uh, what caught my eye is I was watching a few um, a few rundowns and maybe, like, some drive-alongs that they did, you know, in some Baja kind of scenarios. They mentioned that the, the horsepower of the switchback is only about 500 horsepower or 550, mm. something like that. But it was interesting that it was lower than even the dual motor Cybertruck, which I think is is odd. Like it's obviously capable, but it's odd that they wouldn't try to go, you know, more go above so and beyond than the Cyber yeah. Beast. Because I feel like if it was, if they're going to try to go for a market of like you know, equivalent of the Raptor R, which is like 120, 130 thousand, they they need to come at you know the market with like a thousand horsepower EV truck. I think. In my opinion. Yeah. No, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that either. If you're going to put out a new product, why not? Um, why not try to one up, right? One up the, right. the, the main guy that's out there. So, um, yeah, that's it's kind of uh, interesting why they don't do that. But I don't know. Another thing I wanted to show is obviously the big news is the election from yesterday. And, you know, Given the fact that, uh, you know, Elon endorsed Trump and, and Trump uh, won the election, big big news is the fact that uh, Tesla's stock skyrocketed. And oh, right. they, are, they, they, they went all the way up to $288.53 uh, um, a share, which, you know, for anybody that's a Tesla stockholder, and I'm sure there's a lot who are listening to us, um, that's great news. Um, it's fantastic news that the stock, you know, obviously took a big hit. And I think this is the highest it's been since uh, mid-2023, so over a year. So I wanted to share that as well. So for anybody that has Tesla stock, uh, congratulations on getting, uh, getting the stock price. I think yeah, some 100%. of this is also, like, if I had to speculate, probably suppressed because they weren't sure what was going to happen. Well, even with... Even with Trump getting in office, there was a question of what was going to happen with Mexico and the, the Tesla Mexico plan. Because uh -huh. at first it was like, you know, they're going to tariff anything that's coming in from Mexico and it was going to affect basically whatever they built in Mexico, which 
could have been the Robotaxi, it could have been, you know, the next Model 2 or whatever, whatever it was going to be, it was going to affect that. And I think that was kind of the, the unknown, but then probably where it shifted is that obviously Elon's endorsement and then maybe, you know, getting into the presidency. I don't know. It's, it's interesting that that just it shot up the price that way. But I think there's a lot of a lot of factors to it. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, I'm just happy that, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm a Tesla stockholder. It so went up. Son. Yeah, there, hey, there you go. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So let's Probably. hope it keeps going up and up and up. I don't know if you've seen, we haven't done what were they thinking in a while, but there's something that came up recently that I went, okay, we need to, we need to talk about this. So uh, let's go ahead and pull this up. Surprised you didn't talk about the Mexico uh, wreck. <laughs> it, I have that, so okay, we can talk yeah, about we that. But I did see right this one, here. Yeah. yeah, there was a Turo, a renter, and so let's go ahead and show this. So there was a porch pirate, right? So let's go ahead and show that video first. This person steals a package off this uh, person's porch, jumps in the car, and you see the Cybertruck racing by right there. In the video, you hear a, a crash. Uh, well, here's the dash cam footage from the Cybertruck. So they're, oh, okay. uh, they're turning onto the street, and you'll see here shortly, after this Model Y turns, you can see the person jumping into a car, and the Cybertruck takes off. What? And yeah. So you see this? Oh, that's great. Let's wait. So yeah, we can watch it again, Chase. Okay, there, but the Cybertruck. I'm just curious of like what was the motive? Like, well, that's that kind of goes into the point of what were they thinking? <laughs> yeah, like I like, feel like what was in that package though so valuable? That unless it was it. literally like the owner of the house, they saw them running away. That's what. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it that's had what to I'm be. thinking. So once again, you see right here, Porch Pirate, they go, they take the package, they run to their car. You can see the rear end of the vehicle. It takes yeah. off. Which and would make more sense the have this footage too. Yes. Uh, so what my guess is, is the Cybertruck rental, the guy who rented it, this is his home scene. He's, he's getting home. He sees uh, somebody taking their package, his package off the, the porch and decides to go on a, on a little bit of a chase. Um, in a rental. Like, come on. In a rental. Like, what? Look That's at this. Just, it's just bonkers to me. And I think... It's just... I did see... I believe it was the owner of this said Cybertruck that I had posted on X. And he was like, hey, if, if you needed your reason not to put it on Tarot, this is it. Um, yeah. That's the it, reason why I haven't put mine on Tarot. I, I, I thought okay. about it... Many times we've talked about it off air. I actually have my Cybertruck loaded into Turo. It's just not live. Right. Uh, I've done all the settings. I've done everything. And then I just, I just, I've never been able to just hit the button to just, all right, put it out there. I just can't. Because for this, I mean, I'd be pissed, you know? It's, well, I mean, I wanna... in our case, I'm I'm more glad that we, we kind of got out of that when we did because... You know, what if a, a Toro renter had the Cybertruck and the inverter went out? How do you explain that? It's like, okay, what do you do? You know, it's like, it would be like if the, you know, the you were on a rental and the engine just like blew up. It's like, what, what do you do? Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. I just, I'm uh, curious I, to I've... actually reach out to that owner though, because if, if I can find it on X again, because I'm curious what the price point was, because that's always been my running theory is that. Because the the prices of, of Toro renters per day is getting lower, that's where we're starting to see more shenanigans happening. Not saying that like this person was a you know a nefarious person because it was cheap, but that's my theory is that after a certain point, there's a level of seriousness that you take with a rental vehicle when you're spending you know hundreds of dollars a day versus like a hundred bucks a day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It gets to a point where is it is it even worth it? And, totally. um, yeah, yeah, I've, that was always my early days. Uh, the, the thing I dealt with was, you know, is it worth it for me to put it on Turo? And it may have been right. at one point. Um, I haven't checked to see what the rates are over here, but I'm sure they're not very high. 
and it's come down just, quite a bit, even what I've heard in, in LA as well. But yeah, I, I mean, that's I the whole reason say. why, you know, if you go try to rent a Lamborghini, find me a, rent, a Lamborghini for rent for less than 500 bucks a day. You're not going to yeah. find it because it's always yeah. 500 to a thousand because for that very reason, like people need to like put down money to take it seriously. A hundred percent. But I, I also think that with the Lamborghini, I mean, there's less of them out there than there are cyber trucks at this point sure. so that's yeah, market you know so i'm they could kind of do that as opposed to um i think cyber trucks you know seems like everybody's got them at this point i was gonna say there's like probably forty thousand made now like it, it keeps climbing least, pretty fast at least last thing i have um for today is uh you mentioned it already which was the crash that happened in um Mexico of all places. Yeah, pretty incredible. Yeah, this um this is by far I think would you say it's the worst uh accident that well, we've seen? I mean, the worst would be the one in Houston other than with, the fire. Yeah, the the one with the one fatality that we know of for sure would be the worst, but this is probably yes. the second worst, but the one that didn't produce the fatality, which is incredible in its own regard. Yes. But I mean, this thing is just demolished i mean look at this it must have rolled and flipped multiple times like which is crazy because these things are so heavy like they they're hard to flip so what even happened like i i i want to see the video of this thing a hundred percent well it's funny i was talking to my good friend dennis uh, just last week Uh, he's uh, my friend that i mentioned on the podcast before who just took delivery of his beast and he brought it over last week and we took some, we did some launching in it, which was fun. Fun. But we were just talking and in, he was mentioning, you know, the feeling of like uh, flipping, you know, the, the, the truck just sometimes when he turns, he feels like it feels like it's going to flip on him. But I told him that ah, this thing's virtually, you know, you, you can't flip this, you know, you can't flip a cyber truck. It's all the weight is down low and it's centered and, there's like no way. And then I see this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you know, well, obviously, I, think that's the reason I don't why know they the limited the speed is. that you can even go at, you know, a certain height, I think is because of that. You know, like yeah. if you if you're running on the street at like very high, you know, your chances of flipping are probably double at that point. Yeah, this is just uh, pretty crazy and not a lot of details. I've looked. <laughs> I haven't been able to find uh, much on what exactly happened. Yeah. But... Sheared off. Like, it's crazy. But I mean, what I have heard from this is that there was no fatality, and I don't, I'm yeah. not sure about injuries, but I'm sure there's there had not to be some injury free. But yeah. this is one that actually I heard from other people that don't that don't have cyber trucks, but knew that we had one, and they're like, "Oh, have you seen this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that, that's that's pretty bad." But my mm-hmm. rebuttal to that was like exactly what we just said that you know we've only had one one fatality that we know of in a cyber truck, and you know. Arguably, it was just as gnarly as this one, but mm-hmm. I mean, the case there was that you know there was some water involved and the battery caught fire. So who knows if you know if that person would still be alive? If that wasn't a factor, but yeah, yeah. this is crazy. But I mean, shout out to the team because the fact of still saving lives is is a case to hear, even with the Cybertruck. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Uh, real quick before we get going, because um, I haven't acknowledged it yet, but hello to everybody in chat. LJ, Anthony, Hugo, as always, RP714, uh, Yellowstone2016, uh, uh, Mark, as always, Jay, Bill. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm missing. Fury, Fury's in chat. Uh, appreciate everyone, as always, for coming out and oh, yeah. watching us live and supporting us, LJ. So, um, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, Chase, safe travels. Uh, yeah. I'll be back you know. in office next week. So basically, uh, up and down really quick for the, the weekend. But still, like I said, a Friday wedding, not my favorite. Friday wedding out of yeah. out of state, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you're gonna have some good stories for us uh, next week to yeah. let us know how your road trip went. Hopefully, everything it's- goes smoothly. Hundred percent, I appreciate it. Yeah, so far it's going pretty well. Um, I already have some some gripes. I really need to like put them. I need to put them in my notes because there's some small things that I'm like, I don't like about Rivian's navigation and just certain mm. things. But yeah, just minor things. But it's good good feedback either way. 
All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you to everyone who watched us and is listening. Uh, appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys next week.